hello, hello, Diana Smith here. I am so excited to see your smile and face again because it has been a minute, a really long minute, as in a couple months since my last video, because my last video talked about homesteading and that I was gonna start a garden. Well, guess what? It became kind of a full-time job, raising all these beds, getting all the plants done, and now I'm out here with a fully established garden, and we're gonna walk through it together. So let's get to watering, and then I'll introduce you to all the plants. Okay, before I start watering, so many people are gonna say that I am only supposed to water at the root, not the whole plant. Well, I don't know the logic behind that, but here is my logic. I water the whole plant, and I do that because the most natural way for it to get water is rain. I also intentionally put the garden in my backyard so my sprinkler system will hit it. I like to travel, and if I'm gone for a weekend or I'm feeling lazy, I am a one-man show around here. So if I were to, say, have a migraine and I don't want to spend an hour out here watering the garden, the sprinkle s sprinkler system will take care of it. Um, so I did want to make sure that I have a fail safe if I'm not here to water. So the sprinkler system waters it, which seems to be doing just fine. And I water it every day with the wand because I love to love it. I should have been gardening years ago. Another reason that I water the whole plant is because I feel like if there's bugs, I do have um, what are those little things, aphids, that are going crazy over here on my pepper plants. Every day I wash them off. They're driving me nuts. I have diatomaceous earth on here, which is a natural powder. But you can see these aphids right here. Ooh, like look at all those aphids driving me crazy, crazy people. And down inside here, you can see aphids on the little parts. When I spray the whole plant, it does kind of clean that off. And then, like I said, there's diatomaceous earth on it. Um, but we'll address what I'm doing over there after we water. So here are my potato plants. Now, mind you, this is my first garden. So you'll just have to be on this journey with me. They look big, beautiful, and green now. I think I'm supposed to harvest them after they look brown and dead. And then, you know, Google tells me just enough to be dangerous. And there is a tire system where you put them in tires. So my boyfriend is owns a race car team and his sons are race car drivers. So these are a set of slicks off of race cars. And I just love the cute idea of them being in the garden. The tire theory is you've got the three, t you've got your tires, and then when these look brown and dead, you add more dirt on top of the plant, another tire, and you plant more potatoes. So eventually there'll be like a stack of three tires tall. And then when you wanna harvest potatoes, all I have to do is knock the tires over and harvest the potatoes. So in theory, I know what I'm doing. We'll have to see. It's usually watering takes me an hour or so in the morning because I do take my time, check the plants, make sure nobody's got bugs. You'll notice a whole bunch of rabbit crap. Well, that's what I use as mulch. The beauty of rabbits, people call it black gold. Rabbit poop can go straight on a garden. So I've got topsoil and compost and all that kind of good stuff in there. And then once the plants are established this weekend, I or last weekend, I went in and dumped a ton. So there is three to four inches of shavings and rabbit manure. It's just bedding from the rabbit colony. And I covered all the beds and they're holding a ton more moisture. I wanna chime in real quick because as I was editing and I saw all the rabbit manure, which is what I use all over under here, this weekend I just went back and put clean shavings on top of the, let me show you. So this is just clean shavings on top of the rabbit manure mulch, just clean ones, because 
I was having problems with bugs over on that that I just spoke about. And it dawned on me that the manure being exposed would probably attract bugs. So the manure top is still there. And then I just, this is a very light sprinkling of clean, fresh shavings to kind of put a seal on the rabbit manure so that it isn't attracting bugs. So today the garden looks fantastic and I just did this yesterday. So I don't know, first garden, bear with me. But I just wanted to add this because at this moment, the video you're watching is watering rabbit manure all over. So any of you that thought maybe that rabbit manure might attract bugs, you're brilliant. I had the same idea when I was watching it and I was like, hmm, maybe I better go sprinkle some clean on there to kind of put a barrier so the bugs don't want it. So now let's get back to the video. For the first raised bed, I'm so proud of this bed. First off, as I'm watering, you can see it's not bone dry because of the bedding that's down here. This broccoli plant, can you see that head of broccoli right there? People tell me that there's a real knack to grow in broccoli. I don't know what the knack is, but I know I must be good at it. Because if you can see right here and right here, I already harvested two huge heads. So my broccoli plant is doing awesome and I don't see any aphids or any bugs anywhere in this planter we have oh for crying out loud that's a that's a flower that's a pollinator thing that I don't remember the name of it sorry these are beets and I got the tall um green beet because not that I want to eat the leaf but my rabbits love them and honestly that's why I decided to start a garden was for the rabbits and then I just got carried away because I just got excited so um these are beets I'm not sure a lot of my garden has plants places that I'm not sure if they're weeds or they're plants so I legit am just gonna let them grow up if they flower or veggies, they must have been intentional. But like to me, that looks intentional, but I have no idea what it might be. Um, looks like I've got some bugs on this plant, some probably some aphids. I'm going to put some neem oil on things today because I was looking at what you use. Everybody says diatomaceous earth, which I'll show you that in a minute. And that is the white powder stuff that you'll see on some of my plants. I put diatomaceous earth all over my whole garden and then on the ground in here. The problem is it dehydrates bugs, but it has to be down for like five days to dehydrate the bug and it only works when it's dry. Well, my garden is watered twice a day. I hand water in the morning, sprinkler system hits it at night. So the diatomaceous earth is not managing to kick the aphids ass. So I'm going to try neem oil. We'll talk about that in a sec. But back to this one. The broccoli plant is amazing. I did a bunch of pruning this weekend, right, wrong, or indifferent. I don't know. In a week or so, I'll find out. But I took any leaves that were touching the ground on any of my plants and cut them off. Don't know if I was supposed to, but it looks good. Uh, Darn it. I wish I remembered which one this is. I was at the I was at the seed store and a woman said that this was a really fun plant. Put in the comments if you know what it is. It's a beautiful flower apparently and it's going to run down this. In my garden beds, when it came time to, uh, to fill them, like I said, it's my first garden. So up to about right here, they are logs and and limbs and things like that. I had a couple down trees over the winter, so I just cut lumber and put it in there because it'll decompose and help feed it. Then from about here to here is simply compost from my manure pile. I brought some, as you can see it right here on the other side of the fence. This is a topsoil that I bought. Right there is an organic topsoil mix. Not a lot left of it, but so it's their lumber just plain manure compost and then the top is a mixture of topsoil and compost and it ended up drying kind of rock hard. I got all my plants in and it was really hard. So I've spent quite a bit of time in the mornings just even with my hands or a tool maneuvering up the ground the soil and then putting the mulch on it. So now I've got pretty darn good soil in there for everybody. Oh 
I forgot to introduce you to my acorn squash. There used to be a mound. There's no mound because I was busy maneuvering this, manipulating the soil. So this bed is a tough one to really get in there and look. Oh my gosh, look. I have a zucchini flower already. Now I learned an interesting thing. That is a male zucchini flower because it's just on a stem, not on the end of a fruit. Oh my gosh, I just dawned on me. It's, it's kind of like women and men. So that's a man just standing up there on the end of something versus a girl flower has a is at the end of a piece of fruit. So I actually Googled how to prune and take care of these. And an interesting tidbit is in order for the bees to get in here and fertilize this plant, it needs to have access to this flower and a female flower. It doesn't look like I have a female flower blooming yet, but I pruned this to open it up a little bit because they said you need to make sure that they can get in there. My problem before was that you couldn't see anything. This was so full. So like I said, this weekend I went in and anything that was touching the ground or these were overlapping a lot. So I cut them back. And as soon as I did, that flower just appeared. So I did something right. This is a zucchini plant. And the rest of all of these are Brussels sprouts with some flowers intermingled in there. Darn it, I wish I could tell you. I think I have the seed packet. I can tell you what flower that is. Y'all probably know. Just put it in the comments. So it's supposed to be really pretty and really big. So my Brussels sprout plants look great. Again, I came in and pruned anything that was crowding or down here. And there is about three, whoops, what's this? Uh, oh, it looks like I had celery planted here. Maybe not the best call because I think these other plants just are big and overwhelmed it. So there, no, no celery came up. Okay, right here in the middle of introducing you to all the plants, I have to admit, I cheated. The last video I had bought everything for seedlings and I planted seeds and I got a shelf and I did all the little things I was supposed to do. I got lighting and my seedlings looked not so impressive. Then you go places like Home Depot and mine didn't look like Home Depot. I wanted a head start because it's my first garden and so I wanted to be successful. That being said, we cheated. Todd and I went to Home Depot and I bought starts. In hindsight, I would always buy starts. The garden is already producing. I've already gotten two huge heads of broccoli. I've already, well, my, my um, radishes, I have harvested my first batch of radishes. Those did come from seed. I did those. They weren't started in the house. Um, so some of my plants that were started by seed were started by seed in my garden, but a lot of my big established plants were bought as starts at Home Depot for five bucks. And I'll be honest with you, had I known that I could go buy healthy starts for five bucks a pop, some of them are like were like five bucks for a little tray of four plants. Crying out loud, it is to me not worth babying starts and buying lighting and transplanting and all that. Leave that to me, leave that to professionals. It was enough work for me to fill these raised beds. I'll be honest with you, it took me probably a month to get the raised beds where I want them, to get the timber done. And mind you, when I'm gardening, I have a two-year-old grandson with me all the time. So he was a huge help. but everything goes a little bit slower. I can do certain work when he's napping and stuff like that. So those of you with young kids at home, it is doable, but everything takes a little bit longer. So, um, but he did have fun with the starts. It was very important to him every day to check his starts and things like that.
I just wasn't impressed with my starts as I was when I went to Home Depot. So the big established stuff you see started in like this, but Home Depot's plants are like poofy and big enough. So um, I will point out as I go, the ones that were from Home Depot, well, actually I'll just tell you real quick, the things that started as starts, these Brussels sprouts started as starts. What's this one? Uh, Brussels sprouts and whatever that is. Those those big ones started as starts. Right here, this tomato plant and the two pepper plants that are in there, I bought as starts. We look over here on the corn. You can see that the end corn, there was six things of corn. I think it was like six things of corn for four bucks. So those two end ones are starts. The ones in the middle are the ones that I planted from seed. So it just takes a little longer. Depends on how long you want to get an established garden. And I don't have patience. Like seriously, I almost gave up on gardening just filling these raised beds. And I'm a very indecisive person. I have moved around these garden beds 1,500 times if I moved them around once. And I was gonna go outside the fence and then I wanted inside the fence and then I was gonna yada, yada, yada. But I decided, like I said earlier, I wanted them somewhere that if worst comes to worst, I'm a one man show. And if I can't come out and water, they needed to have access to water. So that's why they're in the backyard where the sprinkler system hits them. Also, here's another tidbit. I love gardening in my bare feet. I don't usually do anything in bare feet. My feet are really sensitive. So like I can't go on gravel or anything. But I love the feel of the grass under my feet when I do my gardening. I just love it. It's the only chance I get to walk around barefoot. So um, I love it in my yard. In my yard, uh, These were starts. We'll talk. Those are cauliflower. Um, the stuff over there, the big plants are starts. But the stuff that's going over the trellis, those are peas. I had one pea plant that was a start and the rest of those were seed. And I'll be honest, the seeded ones have caught up with the, the start. So that is something you just might as well start from seed. So anyhow, I just had to tell on myself, I did start with starts from Home Depot and between you, me and the fence posts, I'll do that every year. I am not, I, I, I'm just not out to win the gardener award of the year. So I don't want to start seedlings or seeds. So anyhow, let's get back to meeting the plants. This bed has a beef tomato, beef eater tomato, whatever it's called, a couple of different pepper plants and a couple of these flowers that I still don't know what they are. They'll flower here soon and marigold. Now, yesterday I bought some neem oil because I heard that it can take care of the aphids. So I've got aphids on here. Every day I actually sit out here with my hands and spray and rub all these gross things off. And I use a ton of diatomaceous earth, as you can see right here. I'm not a fan of doing all this work to share my crop with bugs. And somebody told me that as long as I put marigolds in here, I, uh, they don't like the smell of marigolds. Well, as you can see, here's marigolds and blump, 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 blump. There is leaves with the bugs on them. So the marigold keeping the bug away is false. Mythbusters. Here is my corn crop. Like I said, the tall ones at the ends were bought as starts. The rest were done as seed. And in some spots, they didn't grow. So what I did over the weekend is anywhere that they didn't finish growing, I put sunflower plants. Uh, my rabbits love black oil sunflower. Any of you that feed birds, they love black oil sunflower. And all I do with the black oil sunflower seed that I have for my rabbits is soak it overnight and then just put it in the ground. And you'll see when we go to the front yard, you'll see all the sunflower plants. And then I also planted, it's called the three sisters. So I have the corn. They say, wait till your corn is a little bit established and then plant your beans next to your corn. So the beans will go up the stalk. They don't need a trellis. So I'm excited to see how that works. And then in between the rows is a, um, what do I have? I have a squash, I believe, like a 
little round squash. I've got the seeds in there, I'll show you, or maybe I'll forget to show you, but either way, there is a squash planted between. And then this right here and this right here are two squash plants that we bought as starts when we bought the new meat pigs. They homeschool, it's a cute story, they homeschool and one of the kids' projects for school is a greenhouse. So you buy your pigs and then there was a little table of starts. So we did buy two starts. I'm gonna bring you in here. You can see aphids. Maybe you can, maybe you can't, but they're all over this. Oh, and there's some aphids right there. So I'm gonna spritz. See them just hanging out on my leaves? When I water, they will go away, but I'm gonna visit with you guys before I water. So I'll water them off and then I'll apply some neem oil on everything. This planter, I love these huge waxy leaves. I love these. This is cauliflower. Over there is cabbage. My favorite plant in my entire garden is this one. Absolutely. This is red cabbage. Actually, there's the head of cabbage starting right there. These colors are incredible. Purple is my favorite color. And look at the purple vein on this. I just, this is the most magnificent plant. Let me get out of the way so you can see it. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. And then those are regular green cabbage. This right here is peas. Like I said, there was one plant down here that was started from, that we bought, um, that we had already started. The rest of these were from seed. And as you can see, there is no difference. And every day... I kind of lift this bad boy back up so that nothing, I don't want it growing on my other stuff. I want it growing up the trellis. I'm sure I could probably string it, but I can also just pet it every day. Um, underneath here is a kale. It's a soft leaf kale. There was supposed to be butter lettuce, but I'm not noticing that that came up. But I do have quite a bit of kale down in here we should harvest some. And then right here, this is kind of a cute little patch of the kale. Tastes good, it's soft, the animals are gonna love it and I'm gonna love it. But it, um, I spilled the seeds. And so I've been wondering for the longest time when they started coming up, I didn't know what package of seeds I had spilled. Now I realize it's kale. So there's a little cute patch of kale. So these are going to be cabbages, and you can already see there's really good, thick, heavy heads in there. This is a cherry tomato that we bought in this container, and it is actually made to stay in this container. So I did mulch the bottom of it, and I did plant a basil uh, seed in there, so we'll see if it takes off, but we've already eaten some tomatoes off of this. It's amazing! These are just cute hens and chicks that I get to ignore. Here is the diatomaceous earth I keep referencing, and it's just this white powder stuff. I've heard nothing but good things about it. Here is the neem oil that I'm gonna be using. Here is my last raised bed in the backyard. This is full of strawberry plants and the flowers I need. I believe this is called a butterfly weed. And I'm thinking that this clover I do see a little bit of a flower right there. I think this was planted intentionally because there's so much of it, but I don't know in the comments, tell me, is this just a darn weed? Because I'm afraid to weed the garden because I'm not sure if I planted something that's supposed to look like that. I did just watch a video yesterday that says the first year of your strawberry plants, cut off all these runners because the plant is spending too much energy creating runners and not enough energy creating fruit. However, I have eaten a few strawberries off this plant and they're amazing. Today, I will go ahead and trim off all these runners that I thought I needed. I thought that strawberries here would be cute because Daxton can pick them himself. They are ugly strawberries. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but they grow really ugly, but oh my gosh, are they good. So sweet. So there's the tour of the backyard garden. Okay, there was a couple things in my garden that I felt kind of stupid not being able to tell you what they were. One thing too, I do believe in reading. Everybody knows something more. This is the kind of squash. They look like little flying saucers. I love these. They're like, they taste kind of like zucchini, but I don't know. I had them when I was growing up and love them. So these are what is, it just says early white bush scallop. Um, they are what's planted in between the corn. What I am looking for is that big leafed, 
flower. I am learning that when someone recommends something to me, I have started listening. I know. At, I don't know, 53 or whatever I am, I finally figure if I'm going to start ask, if I'm going to ask people for opinions, it's a real insult if you ask their opinion and then you go, oh yeah, that's great. And you go and do something else. So I've stopped doing that. If I ask for someone's opinion, well, I don't always take everybody's opinion. So let me back, let me take that back. I often am learning to take people's opinion, but I'm looking in this box of envelopes for whatever that big leafed flower is. It's supposed to come down. I was actually, I'll laugh. you're going to laugh at me. I was pulling it because I thought it was a weed. I forgot that I had planted it. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but a woman at the store recommended that I plant it and I didn't want to insult her by walking away without the seeds. So I bought the seeds and I was pulling it because I thought it was a weed in my garden. And a girlfriend was over a couple of weeks ago and she's like, oh my gosh, you planted blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, that name sounds familiar. I did plant that shit. I've been pulling it. <laughs> so whatever in the heck, where is it? Right there, whatever the heck that is at the end of all my planters. Ah! Did it. I found it. Nasturtiums. That's what those are. So these big, beautiful flowers are, should be decorating the end of every bed. See? I, I save all stuff. Like if I buy seasoning and I don't like the seasoning, I actually write on the bottle. I don't like it. Like, what is it? I have nutmeg. I don't like nutmeg. I don't care what you do with nutmeg. I don't like it. So instead of throwing away my bottle of nutmeg, I, with a Sharpie, wrote, I don't like this. So that I forever know nutmeg is in my cupboard, but I don't like it. So anyhow, I saved the empty pouch so I would remember nasturtiums. Those are in there. Now that we have solved that mystery, let's go to see the last raised bed. But I'm really excited about this bed. Next year, these bushes will all be so big that none of the rest of these plants will be here. Chances are these will take over the whole bed. But for this year, this is just kind of a fun mod podge because I wanted to fill in the empty space while the rose, raspberry and blackberry bushes grow. If I remember correctly, I think I did blackberry, raspberry, blackberry, raspberry, black, I don't know how I did it, but there's a bunch of bushes there. These are nasturtiums. Nasturtiums, people. I planted nasturtiums. This again is that little clover that it seems to be everywhere. So I'm not sure if it's something I planted. Let me know in the comments. If it's a weed, I'll pull it. Chives, I used some of those. Actually, I used some of those in the goat cheese I seasoned the other day. So that is my raised garden beds. Two more things that I planted. Right here, I planted an actual, what I call a little orchard. It has two cherry trees, two plum trees, two apple trees, and it has those fruit, well, the cherry trees are like called a cocktail. So one of those cherry trees has five different kinds of cherries on it. It has a portable electric fence around it because as you can see, it's now nothing but sticks. Yeah, I bought them all with leaves and they were cute little trees and the goats absolutely loved them. The goats loved that there were baby green leaves within their reach, so now they're sticks. My thought is the fact that they chewed them down to sticks doesn't necessarily kill the root, I'm hoping. So with the portable fence around it, it is electric so nothing can get in it and it's watered daily. So hopefully I'll have a small orchard there. We'll have to see on that one. I'm not expecting a whole lot. Okay, I'm absolutely positive that you cannot see it, but on the broad side of the barn here, maybe you can, maybe you can't, but there is a whole row of black oil sunflower plants gonna grow there. Well, they're, they're pretty good size by now. Actually, if you see a row of greenery, that's it. But it takes up the whole broad side of the barn and then it goes around my compost pile. So when you look out, it will just be nothing but sunflowers. And I did that because I sell a ton of rabbits from this property. 
And black oil sunflower is great for the rabbits. It also helps with milk production for the mamas. So I figure when people come by rabbits, they might want to chop off a sunflower head, hang it upside down, dry it, and give it to their rabbits. So um, that's kind of what I did, but also it will be cool. And also it was my way of experimenting if I could just take the seed from the bags of feed I buy 40 pound bags of black oil sunflower for the rabbits now, and I just wanted to see if I could make those grow. Now, sometimes you have to experiment with stuff because I asked a million um, plant people, I couldn't find black oil sunflower s seeds, just the seed. So I'm like, why can't I just use the seed that I feed them? And everybody's like, no, it's treated, it's this, it's that, it doesn't work that way, you gotta buy a little packet of seeds. Well, I didn't find a little packet of seeds and that just didn't make sense to me because I didn't think that they would treat black oil sunflower seeds that you're feeding birds and rabbits and things like that. So I soaked them overnight, planted them. Within a week, they were blooming. And I thought it was so much fun that literally I have thousands of black oil sunflowers growing all over now. So there's thousands of them there. They're in a cut this raised bed here. They're in with the corn. I'm so excited. So if you have something that you want to grow, just try it. You got nothing to lose. That's what I'm learning about this whole gardening thing. Just try it. All right. That's all I've got for you. Now I have got to finish my chores. So with that, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, stay surrounded by loved ones, and most of all, stay grateful for all of your blessings. Thank you so much. I'll see you on the next video.